I want to see the whole thing. It's an insane number of combinations you can have. Oh, maybe they can't afford this. This is going to help you learn by seeing what works and what doesn't work. Absolutely. Guys, welcome to the course on how we find stocks. So, Paul, what do you look for when you're screening for a stock? Well, everybody knows about the eight pillars that I have, and that was literally my screener for stocks before. Now, it didn't mean that if something was all checks, I did it. It's just a matter of stocks made sense to me in that regard. When I look at a business, whether actually when somebody pitches me a business, these are basically the parameters I look for. Show me your last five or six years of profit. Show me your last five, six years of revenue. I want to see the whole thing. Now that's what works for me. What you need to do is figure out the parameters that make you understand a company more and more mm -hmm. as you've seen in the last couple of years. And if you're, if you've only joined us in the last six, six to nine months, we added return on invested capital to our screener. Before that, I knew what it was. I knew it was important, but I didn't understand the magnitude of the importance for an investor like me based on my new goals. Because remember, my goals used to be, how can I make 20% returns? How can I be Warren Buffett? Now my goals, after realizing that wasn't going to happen, was, okay, what are my true goals? And return on invested capital became a very, very high priority. But it might not necessarily matter to you. And I'm okay. With, like I think that people try to emulate others too much when you shouldn't. Find the metrics that make the most sense to you so that you ask the right questions about the business and you can go forward and making an intelligent decision on what stock to buy. Right. Yeah. So the, we have some great things on our software. So you guys see when we pull up the eight pillars, how it just breaks it down for us and shows us. Now you can come up here to tools, <laughs> click on that, go to pillar search, and this lets you break it down even further. So if you just want to look for companies about uh, five-year ROIC, you click on that, click go. It's just going to pull out those companies that coordinate with our greater than 9%. 9%. Yeah. Exactly. Or if you wanted to have PEs uh, less than 25 and a half percent, 25 and a half. There you go. Screen them down, break them down that way. Now, the great thing about our software and something that I utilize quite often, especially when we're, look, when we're starting to do videos, we did a video on dividends the other day. I'm just going to show you. So let's go back. Let's do something else. Let's look for companies with five-year cash flow growth, a company that can pay off their debt with their five-year free cash flow, and that is decreasing their shares outstanding. And let's update that. Okay. I'm seeing a little bit more stringency here. Key insights. Um, Texas Pacific. Let's see. I'm just going to scroll through and why I'm doing this. Why am I scrolling through while we're on screen? You might say, well, you're wasting time. No, I'm not wasting time. I'm looking at this saying, okay, these companies are I'm not, I don't recognize a lot of them. Not a bad thing. That doesn't mean anything because I haven't seen every company in the world. But what it does say is maybe be a little bit more strict. And that kind of leads me to my next point. Maybe I want to have a little bit more aggressiveness in screening these down. And I want to show you the next tool come to Pillar Screener. And all you have to do is come here, Popular Metrics. It's gonna give you so many different things that you can. You can see that I had a bunch of different things filled in here. We said that we wanted to find a company that kind of looked like a dividend trap. So what I did is I came through here, I went down to Forward Dividend Yield, and I did greater than 7%. And that doesn't mean that it's that everything greater than 7% is a dividend trap, but it let me screen down and see some companies. And I started going through and then I would pull out their uh, uh, their cash flows and say, oh, maybe they can't afford this. What, so, what's going on? So just to reiterate, yeah, the reason you picked over 7% is in this market, when the market's doing about a one and a half percent or not even that, 7% is such a big dividend that we think it could be a dividend trap because the stock price has fallen so much mm -hmm. because cash flows have fallen so much that the, the, that the cash flow cannot support that dividend. Right. That's why he picked that one. Yep right? Because you have to be aware of that. So I, I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. So it's, it's great for finding those type of companies. Now you could screen it by market cap. You could, how many, how many, what is it? Quadrillions of different. So, so how many, so there's so we 12 put, you options. Put 12, you can put 12 in here up to 12. And then how many options per? So and it's then, like 60. And, and of course, if you want to do say 10 year ROIC. Well, how many, I think it's like 60 options, right? So it's 60 times 59 times 58 times 57 <laughs> times 56 times 55 see where times 54. Going. It's all the way down to 40, 49. So it's all those multiplied together. I mean, it's in the quadrillion. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's basically an infinite number because every time you put one in, you can no longer put it in the next one. Right. So you have 60 for the first one, 59 for the second one, 50. You can never put it again. So right. guys, I mean, it's an infinite. I mean, it's not infinite, but it's an insane number of combinations you can have. So I'm just going to show you five-year PE. I'm going to go greater than, I'm sorry, less than 25. 
Okay, we'll go less than 25 with that one. Add that in there. Okay, next thing you can do, you can go, let's go five-year ROIC. I'm going to go greater than 12% on that one, just because ours is nine. Let's go with 12. And I love the fact that we have seven and 10-year ROIC yeah. in these. Yeah, exactly. It's not just five-year ROIC. Yeah. Now, let's see what else. So that was just from our popular metrics. You can, we can go to cash flow. We can find different things in there. Let's go five-year free cash flow. And I'm just going to say greater than zero, okay? Greater than zero. Let's go to the income statement. Let's see. I want to see some revenue growth. I want, again, I'm just going to go greater than zero. And you guys, you can put greater than 10, greater, whatever you guys want to put in there. EM pillars. Let's see. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go, I do want to, I want to get a dividend. So let's put a forward dividend of greater than 2%, Okay we go. And now let's search. And this is going to pull out all of these companies that hit these metrics that I have up here. One thing I'd recommend though, do a market cap one. Ah, good call. Because remember, you might get like $20 million companies. You want to find ones that maybe you pick a market cap greater than a billion dollars. Let's do greater than 2 billion. Okay. Nine zeros, right? Yep. There we go. There we go. 33 symbols. Exactly. 33 symbols based on these metrics. And remember, guys, you could put in whatever you guys want to do. That's incredible. But you see, this is a very, very Look at number two. Tool. My favorite company. <laughs> Why? Because they're not FedEx. <laughs> yeah. Guys, this has been a course on how to screen for stocks. Don't be afraid to play with this. Put in some ridiculous things. You're gonna. It, this is gonna help you learn by seeing what works and what doesn't work. Absolutely. So let's go to the. Let's let me put in some metrics that actually I want to go through, and we'll see what companies come out here. So I want a market cap that's greater than ten billion dollars. Just that'll help me filter things down. Companies that are ten billion dollars, I don't have to spend as much time researching, etc. And I want a five-year PE that is less than twenty-five. So instead of doing the everything money. 22 and a half, I'm going to do 25. I do love return on invested capital. It's something that really can generate high multi-bagger returns over a long period of time. But 9% is enough for me. I want 12%. So it's only going to show me companies that have a five-year ROIC greater than 12%. I want a dividend because I like collecting dividends. They may be tax inefficient, but I like collecting them. So I'm going to do a forward dividend greater than 2%. And Sticking with dividends, I'm going to show you something at the end of this video. Total current assets greater uh, greater than total current liabilities. Yes, I want that in there. Let's see what else we have. I wrote down a couple of things. Ah, yes, I want cash flow. Let's go to cash flow. I want a five-year free cash flow. And all I want this to be greater than zero. That's all I want. Just want to see companies that have five-year free cash flow greater than zero. I want to see revenue growth. Five-year revenue growth greater than zero. Let's see. I put seven out of 12 in there. Let's search and see what companies come out here. Cisco, UPS, Philip Morris. I have 23 companies companies right here that hit my parameters. Remember, you can change these things to whatever you want. Lockheed Martin, Lowe's, Caterpillar, Gilead, Target. Uh, let's see, T. Rowe Price. I know that's one I've been paying attention to. Skyworks, Sirius XM. So I'm not saying that these are perfect, but there's a hell of a lot of them that I'm recognizing compared to the ones that I was just filtering down with the uh, pillar search. Now, something that I wanted to show you guys, speaking of the dividend, I'm going to get rid of these except for the dividend. Actually, I'll get rid of the dividend too. When I was the great thing about this, and what, this is when I realized how big of a, how powerful of a tool this is. We were making a video and we were talking about dividend traps. And what I decided to do to find a company that was a possible dividend trap, a company that generated free cash flow, but maybe didn't, they were paying out so much of their free cash flow in dividends that they couldn't afford it for over an extended period of time. What I did is I came in here and found a dividend that was greater than seven, seven percent. And all I did was filter it down. Now, recognize this. Just because a company is paying a dividend greater than seven doesn't mean that it's a dividend trap by any stretch of the imagination. It just filters it down to say, oh, okay, 7% is very high dividend in this current market environment. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click on maybe Taiwan Semiconductors. Let's click on it. Let's go to their uh, dividends paid. They're paying out $9.3 billion out of their five-year average of $9.83 billion. So maybe that's a little red flag there. But the last year, they did $17 billion. So maybe it's not. But that's the types of things that you can use this for. Anything that you want to screen for, I would encourage you to come in here to Pillar Screener and utilize it. Not just for dividends, but if you're trying to build some type of ETF portfolio, I encourage you to come to Pillar Screener and try to filter some stocks out, do your research, and put together a portfolio. Guys, another fantastic way to find stocks 
And this is something that I realized back in probably 2021, how powerful our community is. Going through here in the chat, and I know you guys all have access to this chat. If you have, if you're in one of these courses, if you're not, if you don't have access, I would encourage you to join the Everything Money community if you bought it as a one-off. But for the majority of you, you have access to these courses. I would encourage you to come in and talk about stocks with people. And you can see here, investing discussions, banks, beginning investors, biotech, bonds, Canadian stocks, commodities, defense, dividend, and the list goes on. Guys, there is a wealth of knowledge out there from the people in our community. And they are going to be able to find stocks that you would never even think of. And you're going to find stocks that they would never even think of and meet together and discuss it. There's a great thing in the Oracle's VM. We have the investing club, the value investing club. Every Wednesday, they do a Zoom call at 4.30 and 6 p.m. And they jump on and they go through a stock. They go through the 10K. They go through the risk factors, the business. They go through the financials. And they all put their heads together and decide, is this something we want to invest in? Is this something that we're just learning from? And maybe you never make that investment. And that's okay. But you understand. The more you understand, the less you're going to fear. It's a true statement. So use the community to your power. So between Pillar Search, Pillar Screener, and the community, you should be able to find stocks that you can wither down and decide on, hey, do I want to invest in this? Do I want to build my own portfolio? Do I want to find stocks that just have dividends? There is going to be a way for you. And this is exactly what I do to find stocks. Thanks for joining this course. You guys have a great day.